Okay, so today I will introduce compound interest with an example with the first question over here and then you can try question number two on your own. Then after that I will explain it as well. So here is the compound interest formula and um, I will clarify each element that we have here. The P will be the initial amount invested. A will be the final amount. So, so far so good, right? R will be the interest rate. N will be the amount of times that the investment is compounded per year. So that's a pretty important uh, value. And we have two of them in the formula. For example, if in the, in the first example here, we have annual compounding, right? Which means that N would be one because it's compounded only once a year. And finally, the T of course is time. Maybe you should be writing this down, but maybe you already are. So here's the interest rate, interest rate, time, N is the number of times it compounds per year. Well, my handwriting is horrible today. And uh, P is the initial amount of money, A is the final amount of money. So for question number one here, I have $1,000 invested at 5% compounded annually. So A is what we want to find out. P is 1,000. Then I have 1 plus R, which is 5%. And since we have 5%, I'll need to rewrite this as 0 0.05, okay? All I need to do is just divide the, the five by 100, so we have 0 0.05. Divided by one, that's because it's annual compounding. For the next one, I'll already give you a hint, for monthly compounding, N is gonna be 12, because then the investment is compounded 12 times a year. So, then in this case, we have this to the power of time, in this case, time is seven, seven years. And time is gonna multiply the N, and N is one, just like it was one over here. So, let me just uh, make this look a little bit better. 0 0.05 divided by one is just 0 0.05, plus one is 1.05 to the power of seven because seven times one is just seven. Great. Now what do we do? One very common mistake is for people to multiply the 1000 by the 1.05. We can't do that because of PEMDAS, right? We have to do exponents before multiplication. So we're gonna do 1.05 to the power of seven first. And let me use my calculator to figure that out. So we get 1.407. Then we can multiply that by 1,000 and we get the final amount of $1,407.10. Okay, so after seven years investing at 5%, compounded annually, $1,000 becomes $1,407.10. Great. Now, I will suggest that you try question number two on your own. If you want, you can pause the video. And now it will explain it. So pretty straightforward, I guess I had already cleared up all the elements that we have here, all the little different letters. And um, so in this case we have A is equal to P, the initial amount is $2,000. Invested a 12% compounded monthly. So the 12%, we're gonna plug it in here for R, but we're gonna write it as 0 0.12 because it's a percentage, right? So 12 divided by 100 is 0 
Now divided by n, n is 12, because it's monthly compounding. So it compounds 12 times a year. To the power of t is 5, because we, we're investing this for 5 years, and we're multiplying the 5 by 12, because that's n again. So we have a equals 2,000 times, now point 12 divided by 12 is 0 0.01, plus 1 is 1.01, .01 to the power of 60. Again, a very popular mistake, please avoid it, would be to multiply the 2,000 by the 1.01 .01 right away. We can't do that because we need to do this first. We need to go 1.01 .01 to the power of 60, and um, we get 1.8167 for that. So we do this first, and then we multiply that value by 2,000 to obtain $3,633.39. So that's it. So investing $2,000 at 12% compounded monthly for five years, this is what we get. So hopefully that made great sense to you, and uh, check out some more videos right here. Good luck.